Last night's X-Files controversy has fans losing their damn minds. The new X-Files is back and the internet is in an uproar over a major retcon that alters the mythology of the show. So before we get into it, major, major spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it yet. Spoiler alert. One of the major shocks of the season 11 premiere is that parts or all of season 10 might have been a dream. It's unclear as to whether all of it or just the finale was happening in Scully's head, but it looks like the writers have pulled a fast one on fans and are claiming that not everything that happened actually happened. Now, if you remember back in season 10, the smoking man planned on wiping out humanity through an alien plague, but if it was all Scully's visions of the future, season 11 will feature her trying to prevent what she saw from coming true. Although the retcon would help negate the fan disappointment of season 10, the real truth bomb dropped in the premiere dredged up a very creepy encounter from the season 7 episode, as the French would say, an ami, and as we here in America would say, an ami, when Scully teams up with the smoking man and it's revealed that he drugged her before getting to their destination and it turns out that he used science to impregnate Scully with a, I can't do it, with a DNA cocktail of alien and possibly his own genetics making him the father of teenage super alien teen William and the literal worst human being alive. It's breaking my heart to even read that off the prompter. So sorry, Mulder, you're not the father. This may seem like a random twist, but in an Entertainment Weekly interview, showrunner Chris Carter claims that he knew back then what the result of that encounter was way back in the 90s after being asked if William's parentage reveal was part of the plan. Carter responded with, yes, but of course, if the X-Files never came back, we would never have gotten to explore it. Not gonna say anything there? And really, it's baffling that this storyline made it through a room of writers and a gauntlet of network execs, and the fan outrage is Totally justified. First of all, adding another tragedy to Scully's scorecard is not something we're thrilled by. Plus, Mulder and Scully's entire dynamic, romantic or not, will now shift. The strength in their bond in season 10 came from frequent conversations about William, and now that he's not actually Mulder's, the involvement of the smoking man in William's creation will test the pair's trust. As for the rest of the season, we're likely to finally see Scully, Mulder, and William reunite, and William's true paternity could be revealed to Scully and Mulder. We're also hoping hoping to finally understand what William's powers are and how exactly he, Scully, and any other alien plague immune folks will be able to stop the end of humanity. Whatever else can't be packed into season 11 may never see the light of day since Gillian Anderson has said that she does not want to do another season and Chris Carter doesn't want to do it without her and if a season 12 would mean more impregnating women with alien babies against their will then yeah, let's just kind of wrap things up. But in the meantime, with the clunky alien mythology set up in the season opener, we're looking forward to getting back to some solid Monster of the Week episodes, which the show did a pretty great job on last year. But what do you folks think? Has the X-Files jumped the shark with all the flash forwards and retcons, or did they already jump the shark with the episode Jump the Shark? Are you still on board? Then let's discuss. Be sure to like and subscribe, and while you're at it, check out the latest episode of Because Science, where Kyle Hill figures out how much power Magneto would need to rip the iron out of somebody's blood. I might actually go watch this episode. Hint, a lot more than you think. YouTube users, smash that little bell to get notifications whenever we drop a video, and Facebook users, give us a like.